everybody. I am Cinnamon Cooney, your archer. And this week is a very special week because it was a challenge that I gave myself during the last lesson. So I'm showing you how to paint an abstract floral step by step, every technique, every color mix, every tool with leftover paint from my palette. Because everyone's always asking me, what do I do with my leftover paint? And I'm always like, paint the next painting. But that's easy to say. It may be harder to do if you've never thought of that concept or done that before. To help me get this mad mayhem out is my husband, John. Hello. He's the one that supported this concept idea as a follow-up lesson. Um, we started with this painting right here. We did that last week. And then I had a bunch of paint left over and got hit with a bunch of questions about leftover paint and everything. So I'm like, let's do it. Let's show you guys how I would paint something with my leftover paint. And I'm actually pretty happy about this. This is kind of a crazy, free, abstract painting that I think you guys are going to like. Um, you don't have to use leftover paint. The colors are listed in the description below. There is a traceable on the website. You, I'd show you how to draw it, but you don't have to draw along with me. Um, but this concept will work with all of your paint and all of your lessons. So I think this is one worth doing. It's not a lot of time, is it, John? No, not at all. It's a really short lesson. So It's like less than 30 minutes. Get your paint, get your brushes, come back, and let's just have a fun day painting abstract. Come on, let's go. So we talked last week about what happens when you have a bunch of paint left on your palette if you'll remember. Leftover and paint. So this is the leftover paint from the last painting, which will be linked in the iCard. John's going to make sure that I remember to do that. <laughs> a memory. I will try to store it. We're on an 8x8 eight eight surface. And interestingly, in my own life right in this moment, I'm actually kind of under a time crunch. Mm. Why is that? So Because you have to go to physical therapy. Oh, by a we'll have to see. <laughs> For health You're going to out me. going to out him. Well, you've asked the question, so I thought you wanted an answer. Oh, yeah, do. The colors from last week were dioxazine purple, cad red medium, quinacridone magenta, Naples yellow light. Um, in night, yeah, in the Senelian line, in the other lines, it's titanate yellow. Mm -hmm. There's a whole blog about it. Check the description. Burnt sienna, ultramarine blue, thalo blue, uh, thalo green, cad yellow medium, Mars black, and titanium white. So I want to use up this paint and create something that kind of goes with the last painting that I did, but is a light abstract. And one of the things that I'm going to want to do is uh, kind of maybe just do a floral because it gives me an opportunity to use up a lot of paint. Mm -hmm. And that way I won't feel like I wasted so much. Yep. Uh, I'm going to do it on an 8x8 eight eight again so it matches last week's painting. That way they're kind of matchy-matchy. They'll look nice together. So now we should go into step one. Yeah, step one. So it is nice to have a stay wet palette or some way of creating a sealed palette so you can hold your paint for storage over time. And I think I'm going to just sort of sketch in maybe the concept or idea of a simple fl uh, floral. I'm going to take a half inch angle brush and uh, today I'll just take a mix of my cad red and my quin magenta. Hmm. I'm going to come down low on the surface and just make a line kind of across. And we'll say that that's my table space. That looks okay. And I used a tool called a T-square. That's going to help me make a straight line because sometimes I'm straight line challenged. Now, I could be centered or off-center. And I think for this one, I'll, I'll decide to be off-center. And I'm going to make two vertical lines to represent a vase. Shall we? Mm -hmm. And actually, I did pretty good there. I always say I'm straight line challenged. And then when I check myself, I'm like, hmm, that's not, not, that's not wholly bad. terrible. Made me want to make it even more off-center. Sometimes I'll check things and be like, mm, be more off center. It doesn't hurt while I'm working out that space, right? To kind of experiment and think about that. So that ended up being, you know, just a couple inches across. Uh, if you want to look at that, it's about four fingers total on my hand. Your hand might be a different number of fingers. And I'm going to make a little smile here and a matching smile here. All right. And that's how we're going to do that. Matching smile here. Now, the neat thing about vases is they could do interesting things. Like this vase could actually be wider on the bottom and narrow on the top. You can see that sometimes. But I'm going to do the cylindrical. Mm. And I may, I may lower the lid mm -hmm. a little bit so I can put more structural flowers in here and give more space for them to be in the focus of my uh, basic still life. Still taking my cad red and my quin magenta. I'm going to loosely sketch an idea of a shape. 
what you... And then say, uh, kind of like a Proteus. I think I'm going to do some Proteus flowers because they're so... So, so amazing and structural. And to do that, to just loosely sketch that, and I just want to know where things are. I'm kind of pre-planning my floral in some kind of way right now. It can help you if you have trouble visualizing the balance in your floral to use even an online bouquet that you find because florists often go to quite a lot of design mm-hmm. uh, class and they will have worked out many of the problems that you are facing early on. All right. So we'll say that our basic floral is going to be asymmetrical longer on this outside. There we go. That's what we got to know to start. That's good. Right? Kind of little rough spaces around to say this is going to take up about this much scale, and we're going to have wonderful little branches that bend low. Let's, and I'll make sure that you have this in your step-by-step so you can see exactly what I did here. So you can do it for yourself at home if you want to paint exactly along with me, which I do recommend since we probably have the paint together Mm -hmm. from last week. So now I'm going to kind of set the stage abstractly around this. I'm going to get a bigger brush. This is a three quarter inch angle brush. You could use a big bright. It really wouldn't be important. And I'm going to start with a gray, a neutral. I can create neutral colors by using complementaries that are in a still life, or I can create a whole different neutral gray. And in this particular case, I'm going to create gray with burnt sienna and ultramarine blue. I'm going to start to loosely paint in some of the lighting and space that would be going on with my floral. And again, because it's abstract, I can be a little expressive if I want to. I'm going to get a little white in there. You can see that it is quite gray. The lines that I have here on the horizontal and coming around, they're really going to help me know where objects are placed. I could even go lighter in my gray, I feel. Mm. I may come in even on a lighter gray. Right now I want to just paint kind of loosely. Yep. Take advantage of that. Use up some of this paint. Now, even on a using up your paint kind of plan, like what I have here, guys, chances are you're going to use more white. If you were hoping to get through it without using any of the white, it would not be realistic. I'm painting in very quickly. I don't mind that the paint hasn't dried before or that some of it is picking up into the background. That isn't going to hurt us at all. Because I'm trying to use up what's on my palette. I want a light value in the background, and I'm going to put in a stronger, more colorful floral to pull that forward. So I can use any light colors on my background. Mm. Any. 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 I can pick up any of this paint that's left on the palette drying. If you'd like to see what we did last week, so you could have your own leftover palette, that's fine. Or you could just put out these colors in small amounts. Um for painting along today. I'm getting lighter and lighter as I come out. I just want to have a nice light background. And that will help me have contrast. I'm painting into my sketch. It does show through the light color, Mm -hmm. so I'm not losing it, right? But that way I have very distinctive values. in zones that I'm picking up and come into like, say even that flesh color here that we had, Mm -hmm. right? Doesn't hurt. Pick off paint off the brush. All right. Little gray. Make sure that it's quite light. And if this is dry, I can even dry brush and do some rough painting.
Okay, I'm just coming in with more white. Mm -hmm. So everything is covered. Everything is there. And we're being real strong. We're being real brave. We've got a nice angle of a dark value coming in. We've got a nice bit of shadow kind of carving down with the stem line we're about to have, which I think is going to look fantastic, actually, when all is said and done. And we now have a very neutral background, but it's kind of still visually exciting to put our florals against. So hopefully this is very exciting for you kind of seeing how, um, hey, I can take this leftover paint and do something with it and not be stressed out. Mm -hmm. I think that's important to know that you're not in general trapped into things um, in your painting. I'm going to take a little of my cad red into my the oxazine purple and together they make almost like a, a burgundy. I'm going to start with a fairly dark color. And I'm still using my three quarter inch angle. You could use a half inch angle. You could use a cat's tongue. You could use pretty much any brush that uh, you wanted. I'm just painting in that burgundy. And I, I do want this shape to be kind of clean and crisp. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm being a little precision here, even though I'm being very loose a lot of other places. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you do want it to have a distinctive kind of zone. I'm going to take a little of my ultramarine and my phthalo blue together. And I'm going to come across here on the back side, stri striking across. That's kind of striking in and of itself. Mm -hmm. I definitely will want that to dry a bit before I come back with the highlight color. Um, so while that's doing that, let's get some uh, interesting green stems and things going that are expressive and fun. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to start out with a little bit of my burnt umber and my phthalo green over here. Make a nice deep brown green. Bring a stem that's coming down. Mm -hmm. Let's uh, have a stem that comes up, maybe one that's over. So just like a florist that kind of arranges flowers, when you're putting your painted stems in the vase, you yeah, want to think about balance. Arrangement. And arrangement and how those things, uh, you know, impact the viewer. I'm going to come on an angle. and start painting some very structural thin leaves. And to do that, I'm just oh, you spun pulling it around. The, yeah, yeah, I'm spinning it around just so that I can pull that stroke back. This stroke is easiest to do when you pull back. You want to be able to pull that back. It's got structure, as you can see. It is a structural leaf, but, you know, pull back. Green and brown. It's nice and deep, isn't it? Mm -hmm. You can see I come to the edge. These are thin leaves. So these are leaves that might be like a eucalyptus or uh, something a florist might pick to make sure that there's some height. Mm -hmm. You can check your image periodically. This is fun, right? Yep. You know, um, and this technique will work seasonally i'm going to put some random leaves kind of loosely um, as you go so you could you know pick seasonal bouquets um, when you're doing this sort of abstract stuff you can really find inspiration online and as long as you're not painting objectively um, really stay out of that copyright zone that sometimes we worry about look at that that's looking already pretty cool, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Pretty amazing. Look at that go. I'm loving this already. Let's take a let's take a picture. Let's call it a step. Uh, dry the canvas, and I'll meet you back on the next layer. So now I want to put some highlights and some volume and uh, interesting different other little textures in here in this background space. I'm going to take that same big angle brush 
I'm now going to take my green that I've been doing over to my yellow and get kind of a striking bright green. Let's add a little white into that. And we're going to begin again, and I'm going to just make sure that our leaves perhaps have another kind of value and color. Isn't that exciting? Mm-hmm. I don't want to take out all the dark value that I have put in. I'm still pulling back on the stroke. I want it to be dark and light, almost um, like an olive leaf color. Painting just some of those in. You know, don't paint away the dark. And you can even kind of come out, get a lot of white and yellow. And add some of those in that space there. That looks pretty exciting. We've used up some paint and we've got a nice design. Let's come across this and uh, be interesting again. I'm going to take white into my blue mix up there. Come across this side with a dry brush. Oh. Makes kind of an interesting space. And then I'll go ahead and go down. That's interesting. Isn't it? And I'll pick up some of this kind of yellow green here and I'm going to come up the vase. And maybe that's speaking about a little reflection on it. Mm -hmm. You know, and you can always do that. You can uh, talk about those things and it can be interesting, it is interesting to the picture itself, right? So let's call that a step and we're going to keep cooking. I think it's going pretty well, don't you? Oh, yeah. you. I think you're going to plenty of time. Okay, so now I want to put in maybe some of my Proteus flowers and some interesting other colors and structures. And to do that, I will definitely uh, want maybe my round brush and my angle brush. I'm trying to use last week's brushes just to see if there's sort of a carryover to that. I'm going to take my Cad Red and my Quinacridone Magenta together. And I'm going to make some Proteus flowers that are perhaps in the background. Let's get some Naples yellow in there. These are little spear type leaves and I'm just pulling back again. It's similar, isn't it, to what we've been doing, you know, everywhere. That looks pretty good. Yeah. It's kind of a, almost it could be maybe sort of, huh? A maybe little bit of our purple of and red. A, huh? Thought of a weird little plant. It is a weird little plant. We used to have these uh, groves of these where I grew up. We would ride the horses through and the growing. And so what I've done there is I've added the center of that little stem. I'm going to grab a little white and make sure we've got a little value there that's kind of coming in on that. I'll let that continue to sit. I'm going to get a much darker color here. And up in this space, go into those ranges. This is, you know, could be a sprig of something else, could be just a darker value of that. I think it looks really interesting. Yeah. In my mind. I think I so, think anyways. It's beautiful. I'm going to take a little of my yellow into this purple. And, you know, when you take those contrasting colors together, you get some really spectacularly interesting mixes. Just adding little bits of that maybe here and there because it's abstract. It doesn't have to be super realistic. I think I've got some far off petals I can get into over here. I'm going to take a little of my cad red and magenta. 
together and a lot more of my Naples yellow light, even white. We're getting into some light pinks. Maybe the, this wonderful plant back here. I'll turn it so that I can have a nice round presentation of this one. And I think I need some more of the deep purple. And I just loaded my brush. Look, I'm just going to go into it, right? Deep purple. That's what makes the... You know what? Those don't always look like they're behind because of that highlight on them. Right. I'm going to get into my green, and I don't mind that it's kind of got on onto my um, purple. I want it kind of loosely mixed, how it all goes there. Just pulling those in. Now, I'm going to need to dry this to even remotely have a chance of getting that next layer in. So let's get this dry, call it a step, and come back and see how the next layer goes. Let's put a really um, kind of exciting center. I'm going to get a little of my ultramarine blue and my white. And I'm going to put a, a big strong shape right here. Not a big strong shape. That one's kind of interesting. Don't want it to be too streaky. That looks good. I'm going to take my yellow over into my green and white. Pull some up into that big, strong shape. I'm kind of like wondering uh, what would happen if I grabbed some of my blues and uh, tuck little bits of something here. These kind of represent maybe little dropping flowers. Hmm. You know. Petal D flowers. Something. Something. Do, 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 do. You know, I like to uh, play with the idea of these textures. I like that too. You know, just a little something in the texture. In that space, it's interesting. You could do that. All right, maybe a little more yellow and white together. But you can see I am perhaps you know getting into some of this. Um, I'm gonna add some unexpected yellow here, and I'm making random kind of implied shapes so that it could be leaves, it could be a flower. We're not really sure. I just want that pop of yellow there because it feels balanced to me. I'm going to come back with some white. And I'm going to just add some white, but let what show through underneath. But I want that's that a, pop of white. That's let's, a pretty little thing. Let's dry this. It's like a mushroom cap. It's a thing there, right? So I'm going to want to finish the petals that are going around this plant. And, you know, I could be light. I could be dark. I do want some contrast. So I'm going to bring these in maybe, you know, an interesting pink here. I'll curve the brush. So that they have that kind of uh, foreshortened feeling on them. Now we have that beginning of that flower is really sort of finished there. We haven't had to say so much about it that it got away from us, but it is kind of fascinating and interesting. Yeah. Um, back into maybe the, the cad and magenta. 
I'm going to put some petals in front of this one. And I'm going to start the petals here. Or perhaps this one that's a little more forward facing. You'll notice that I'm just picking up color, right? And now I'm using the corner of my brush for. So it's like the, the toe of the brush. Yeah, I'm going to let a little toe. toe of the brush get in. And I want this one to really show, so I'm making it a little bit darker. And then the center of this one is like going to be a dark purple. Perhaps, you know, kind of working that out. And then let's go into like a really exciting yellow green at the base. Oh, that adds some dimensionality. And I'm working the, the toe of my brush to kind of show that off, right? But we're just getting some of that yellow green. There we go. That doesn't look bad. You know, I can come back in to my green and brown mm -hmm. on the smaller brush. And fill in, if I feel like it needs it, some leaves. Oh, yeah. Grab some lighter green there. Just sort of builds towards yeah. the viewer. Build toward the viewer. Exactly the way of thinking of it is build towards the viewer. And I get a little of the kind of white here and make sure that this is well balanced across the piece so i'm just adding this brighter brighter value because i want it to be fairly light but even as i'm adding what is implied other flowers i don't want them to be that dark yet or anything um, and speaking of, let's get a little bit of our white on the brush and just a bit of our pink and yellow and a little more pink. Can put another little layer in there. So that's pretty, that's pretty exciting and an interesting, again, kind of proteus shape because you don't have to be that perfect with these. I'm going to dry this and come back and we're going to do some wrapping up features. So now I want to come in and do the forward facing petals, make sure that there's more coming down the uh, vase so that has balance i'll finish out the petals on this flower still using my half inch you can see i'm curling the petals around so that they they kind of cup oh yeah the proteus so that's nice um i can always bring like one down saying oh you know maybe it opened up and kind of fell down the front of the vase which works pretty well at this stage, I might grab a little of my white and my phthalo blue. Might even get a little of my Naples yellow into it. Kind of make a very interesting aqua or turquoise. And capture some loose yeah. like line sketching. See how that pops against that? Mm -hmm. Sometimes a little bit of something, a little small amount of that color can help things be super interesting. I'm on the corner of my brush and I'm just 
being super loose about it. I don't want to be too, too anything. Come down on the vase and another little bit of it like this. I feel like we could have a bit of the uh, maybe yellow and white. It's okay if it gets a little green in it, but yellow and white. That looks really nice, that little touch there. Yeah, it really does. Really, honestly, it, you know, you're just going to want to find any place that needs just a bit of balance and color volume. I feel like I want to open that up there, and I'm going to do that by taking a little of my green here into my yellow. Right? I'm getting that light, light green there. I'm coming inside on this flower and kind of popping that open. And then a much lighter version with the white. See how we're just adding that in? Mm -hmm. Or we're like, oh no, I want you to have just a little more. Of that color. And there, that balancing of the colors, I think, kind of really cool and critical. It really is. It brings this sort of, sort of balance around. Yep. So, I don't know. I feel like we've done a lot here. I just want something happening up front on these front flowers. I could make them darker. I'm going to take my number four around. I'm going to get a little purple and red into them. Even a little magenta. Oh, I thought you were talking about the little yellow ones on the front. No, the little yellow ones on the front really make me happy. I just want Those, this I, fellow to feel like is different than that fellow to feel like is different it, than that fellow. It You added some unexpected depth to it. I did. Nope. Just adding little touches. But honestly, at some point, you've got to be like, all right, I kind of took my journey. <laughs> <laughs> I've I, gotten some paint. These kind of quick little abstracted paintings can help you work out your balance, your color mixing, getting braver in your choices. I could probably do a whole nother painting here. <laughs> and that's my point is like you get to the end of the project. What do you do? You do the next painting. I'm going to try to find a color that would be nice to sign in. It's not going to be too out of place, but is visible. So this is all we're doing. And that's what I could do with the leftover paint. I could probably, looking at this, I could get two more paintings out of this palette. Wow. All right. There we did. We had an abstract floral with leftover paint. That turned out really cool. It did. It's a lot of fun. You know, you could get your Posca pens out, you could keep going, your liners, your stuff, but sometimes it's good to get in and get out and take a minute and look at it and let it digest inside of you. All right. I hope this is a gentle reminder to keep having fun in your painting and not take it so seriously that you forget why you started, which is probably to enjoy your life a little more. Um, be good to yourselves. Be good to each other. And I want to see you at an easel really soon. Bye-bye.